nscaler454 here, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be building the Walders Cornerstone Superior Paper Company in N-Scale, so stay tuned. So the first thing you'll notice is this box is huge, and that's because there are two full buildings inside of it, which is awesome. Uh, it also means that you need to make sure you have enough space on your workstation to work with it. In fact, I need to clear off a little bit more on my station because it's just so big. But it does also mean there's going to be a ton of parts inside, which is fantastic. It's going to be a lot of fun to build. Look at this bag of parts. Wow. This is going to be fun. But before I get too far with this, I am going to go and wash these with a soapy detergent solution. And uh, that'll clean up any of the oil, oil residues or anything that might be on the plastics. And that will help the paint adhere to it. And then I'll come back and we'll start figuring out what's what and begin our paint and assembly. We have all the parts washed and dried. And now is a good time to start thinking if you're going to put lights on the inside of the building. I'm going to prepare for that. Whether I do the lights or not, we'll see. And one thing I do is paint the inside surfaces of all the walls. And I do that to keep the light inside the building. I don't want it bleeding through the plastic. So we'll start off with a coat of flat black. And that black is really what's going to keep the light from bleeding through. And then I'm going to go over it with a coat of semi-gloss white. We we'll use the white to reflect the light because the black will keep it from, you know, bleeding through. But it kind of absorbs the light and dulls it down, doesn't look very good. So the white should reflect the light. We shouldn't need as many LED lights, and it just should overall look a little bit brighter. The instructions, as usual, leave a lot to be desired. It is a single piece of paper, and that's for two full buildings. I don't know, what is that? Three and a half pages? Okay. Some of the things on there are so small you can't even tell what it is. And uh, there's going to be a few part numbers on here that will see duplicates that are not the same part in the actual screws. For example, Right here we have part 29, and then we have here part 29, right there. Now, the reason for that is they use the same sheet of pieces for multiple kits. And you'll get parts on here that you're not going to use, like this little building right here. This whole sheet is part of that interstate oil company kit. I get it. It's a way of uh, being cost effective. And maybe I can actually use some of this stuff, so that's not a bad thing. Now I am going to work on some of the things that are pretty obvious, like putting together these stacks. I have a feeling there's going to be a crease in there that I may want to fill, so let's start with that. If you're kit building or working in model railroading, get yourself a set of flush cut pliers. For glue, I like to use Tamiya products. This is their cement and this is their thin cement. And sometimes I'll use this Rebel squeeze bottle. Nice and handy at times. That'll work. actually fits together pretty nicely. I'm now going to paint the concrete bases to where these silos and cylinders go and I'm going to try a new technique. I'm going to be using a makeup sponge and I'm going to try dabbing most of this but let's give ourselves a painting spot. So the thing I'm not a big fan of is how some of these pieces are connected to the sprues. It's like a big flat piece. I don't like that. It makes a lot more to clean up later on. I mean, it's not that bad. You try your brush to brush a little bit on first. Then after that, we're sponging it. Paint I'll use is this uh, Dolphin Gray. Ooh, that's a lot. That's okay. Definitely a little blue. Definitely a little bit blue. Yeah, little blue. 
but I have a plan. One plan I should use is water. Let's thin this out a little bit as it is a little thick. Ah, that's better. Here we go with this. Water down there. It's currently too blue, so it's kind of a creamy color, isn't it? It's okay. We'll use a little bit of the model air white. It's already thinned, so that should thin this out quite a bit. I put together the stacks and then used a little bit of this fast drying gray putty to fill in the gaps and any of the defects. Sanded that down and now these are ready for paint. The big silos I also sanded down using 220 grit sandpaper and it just smoothed out any of the high spots and whatnot and it did leave a little bit of a textured finish to it and I'm okay with that because once it's painted if it shows through I think that texture is going to look great. I'm still debating what color to paint these. Do I go with a concrete color or a metallic color? And I'm kind of leaning towards a metallic. So I might do a base coat with this dark iron and then spray a good coating of the steel over it. And I think that will look cool. And maybe some rust on the top as well. So I'm not 100% sure, but we'll see. All right, let's see what these look like. Let's see, I taped off parts that I didn't want painted. I expected a little bit of overspray, but that's really not too bad. I'm going to do a little bit of trimming and prep on these panels, and then I'm going to spray it with this Tamiya's Dark Yellow. The wall panels look great. I really like this color. For the brick, Typically, I would just go over the whole surface with a light color for the mortar, then I'd wipe it off, and the brick-colored plastic would pop through. And it looks great. I've done it before. Good success. This time, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to paint it with an airbrush using the Panzer Aces Shadow Flesh Color. I think that's a great brick color. And we're going to see what it looks like. I think the bricks came out great. The color is very close to the original plastic color, just the paint takes away from that plasticky look, which is what I'm going for. And now it's time to do the mortar. And what I do is I take a little bit, I'm going to use light gray, do a drop or so in there, and then the key is to heavily water it down. You want a lot of water, okay? Because it's basically going to be a wash. With a nice light touch, we should be able to just, just touch it and go across. And that will fill in all the gaps. Oh yeah, that's better. I guess that very watered down. Look at that. The way it just kind of transfers over.
I taped off the smokestacks the way I wanted, which is three stripes of red, three stripes of white. And based on this configuration, these five stripes need to be 1.2 inches in height. And the best way I found to do that was to take one inch masking tape, tape it off here and here, and then some quarter inch masking tape here and here with a slight offset. Any kind of imperfection, you shouldn't notice it. For paint, I'm going to be using Tamiya's X7 Red. Now this is a gloss red, and I do not want this to be glossy. So the way I'm gonna counteract that is I'm going to mix this about one to one with 99% rubbing alcohol, and then use an airbrush, and that should turn it into a matte finish. If that's not enough, I'm going to go over it with a satin clear coat. Just gonna take a few coats for sure. It did turn out a little bit more glossy than I hoped, but let's pull the tape off and see what it looks like. Since it is a little bit glossy, I am going to go over it with a matte finish and maybe that'll dull it down a little bit. I've decided to paint these a metallic color and I'm gonna use Tamiya's Dark Iron XF84. That's my base coat, which I'm gonna concentrate more on the top than the bottom. And then I'm gonna go over it with this Model Air Steel. Maybe a little thick. Oh, big splatter, you see that? And I'll paint this with the steel. We're gonna go from the bottom up. These are looking pretty good, but now I might ruin it because I'm going to add a rustic color. And this is just a concoction of different, you know, colors of rust, a bit of the wash, and that brick color I had so I'm just going to spray it thin coat on the top of it to simulate that that's where moisture is and it's kind of settling. We have to paint all of these window trims so I'm going to use Tamiya's XF83 Medium C Gray 2 and a very fine brush. This is a 20 aught. And we're just going to start the process. I'm having trouble seeing. Let's paint the concrete section of our walls. I am using model color light gray. From the bottle, it looks like a good color. I've already done a piece, so I'm gonna show you something here in a second though. This paint actually lays on really, really nicely. I'm quite impressed by it.
Okay, look at that. Looks pretty good, right? Look at the color when it dries. That is significantly darker. And I was not expecting that. I was expecting more of this color, which I was quite happy with. So I'm going to need to do some sort of layering on top of that, which I was expecting to do anyways. But it's now, I, I want this lighter than that. So I'm going to add this Tamiya Sky Gray. I'm going to apply it with a makeup sponge. And hopefully we can get a lighter texture out of it. I really should tape this off, honestly. There. Now we can go to town on this. I think that looks better. I think some of the reason why this is turning out so well is inside this pipet is the Tamiya's X20A thinner and it's just the way that it's reacting with the paint and I'm using it in, in almost a wash solution. It's very, very thin and it when it dries you can see it kind of bubbles up in certain areas. Yeah, it's turning out really good. I'm very happy with it. One thing I did not consider is that the roof is going to come up to this line right here, so I need to paint that as well. For the concrete on the brick building, the base layer I'm going to use the Tamiya Medium C Gray 2. Dabbing the sky gray on. Here we can see the difference between the two. Which one do you guys like better? We're going to move on to the things that need to be painted a metal color. And I'm going to use that steel color paint. And uh, there's a few different things. We have some doors. We have some air conditioner units and some vents and some pipe and whatnot. And I like to build as much as I can all at once and then paint them all together. So we're going to start with these little air conditioner units right here. I was going to put this all together, but I realized I want my pipes to be a different shade of metallic than the structure. I'm going to do aluminum using this model air aluminum for the frame and then steel for the pipes. I don't think there's a single difference between model airs steel and their aluminum color. This is painted aluminum and this is painted steel. This steel even has a little bit of the gunmetal gray in it which is quite a bit darker and I'm still having trouble seeing the difference. I like to do some of the weathering and detail work before any of this stuff goes on the model. So I'm going to use some of this Vallejo black wash, a really fine tip uh, and long hair brush. And we will some dark let it green down there we go
Looks pretty good, so we'll start putting in our windows and doors. So I find that the windows are going to be fine, but the doors right here, they're set back quite far because of this recess right here. And I did not paint all the inside edges with that. So I think I'm gonna have to go back and do that. That looks better. So let's start putting these in. Well, there is a top and bottom to these. You want to have the frame of that towards the top. I think that looks pretty darn good. I'll do some weathering in here later on though. One thing I noticed is on the box, each one of these doors has a frame around it, like bumper pads for the semi trucks. I don't see that included anywhere in the kit. I think we're finally ready to assemble Instructions are a little bit confusing, so for the most part we're going to wing it, but we will use it as a reference. I did add some bumpers to uh, the bay doors right there, which all I did was use a chunk of cardboard from a cereal box, painted it black, and glued them on. I put this piece of paper down, just so I don't glue my cutting mat. I'm going to use a lot of glue here, so I'm probably, I probably should be wearing a mask. I think the main goal here is to make sure that the base is tight. Now, I should mention, it does say to use these little L brackets down there, right? To go underneath. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me because then you're going to have this whole bar that sticks right across like that, and your track is going to have to go over that. And so you're going to have to build some sort of filler in there. So I think I'm going to end up cutting this piece off. All right, maybe I'm crazy or maybe I just can't read instructions, but these two pieces butt up against each other like that. And this wall goes here and this wall goes here. There is nothing that I can see that goes underneath this corner right here to support it. Nothing. Like, look at the instructions here. I see nothing in these corners that do anything. But I do see these strips, which I didn't understand when I first had, uh, I was looking at the kit, or the sprues. I guess they just go in the seams like this, right? Like one there, and then one here, or whatever. And that's supposed to just glue them together and hold them together. And I can't help but think back, you know when you're a child, like, one or two years old and you're putting Legos together and you don't really interlock them because you don't understand how, uh, you know, mechanical engineering works. That seems like what this is. Like, honestly, you, you figure that out by the time you're like five years old. How is this like this? Wow. Well, now I got to think about figuring a way to build something up because that's just not good enough. Okay. I have a solution. I don't know if it's a good one, but it's a solution. So the first thing I need to do is glue these together. Ruler to make sure it's square. I did chop off that section of the L. And we'll slide this in. Again, we'll make sure it's as square as I can make it. I built my own little brace in the middle. Let's shove that in there. Good. I like that.
we're going to use this to keep it square. Once again, we will use the roof as a as a way of keeping things square. Let's start building the other one and right away, we'll see there's an issue. Looking at the instructions, you can clearly see there's this little lip sticking up, right? However, that is mirrored. We cannot build it that way. So we have to build it this way. And that means that this will never sit completely flush right to this edge right here. Let's talk about the final details. These little vents right here are supposed to go on the craft building, which is the tall yellowish one. And these vents are supposed to go on the main building. Now the instructions say that you're supposed to drill out the roof of the main building here based on these indentations on the bottom of the roof. But if you notice, those holes, if I drill them out to that size, do not match the size of these vents. It's not even close. So, do I drill the hole bigger and then stuff those in? Do I use one of these little pegs or whatever? They go in like so, right? And then plop those on top? Well, not according to the instructions. So, once again, the instructions are not clear. Not to mention, I gotta say, particularly these ones, they don't look all that great. So, I'm thinking I might just design my own or find an alternative because I don't really care for those. This pipe bridge gantry deal is really cool. Unfortunately, you're limited to how you can use it because you need to have your building space this far apart and square to each other. But I do like it. And then you just place them on the little supports like so. Like that one. And maybe that one. And away you go. So I like it. I just don't know if I can use it. You're probably wondering why I haven't shown the build of these storage tanks. And the reason is I just don't know where to put them. Do they go against the wall of the main building or maybe on the roof or maybe the roof of the wall of the craft building? And how high do I even build them? I'm not sure because you do get lots of these little pieces and putting them together is very straightforward. You just align the seams 90 degrees to the other one, right? Just like so. Very easy. You also get enough pieces to build a taller one, which it comes with all the piping and stuff. And again, where do these go? So you guys can figure out how you want to place it on your layout and what color you want to do. I probably will do white, but we'll see. The kit does come with decals, which is great. Um, use whatever you want on them. If I decide to ever use them, it's probably just going to be the the large sign, but I'm going to cut off the main mill or the craft mill and put them on a separate sign and glue it to the side of the building. But it's nice that it comes with something. I talked about doing lights at the beginning of the video, and I don't have time for this one. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to install lights, but I definitely intend to customize the crap out of this. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, obviously hit the like button. And as always, thanks for watching.